like this oh do you guys ever get the holy spirit chills holy oh, holy moly that phrase why are you so afraid sticks out to me so much because i feel as if it's like god saying you're really worried about that like you just experience all the things that i just did the miracles that i perform yet you're gonna waver in disbelief that i wouldn't be able to get you through this storm God essentially is telling us, if you want the best, if you want what he has for you, you need to be willing to wait. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis Lee Trevino, and I create faith-based content along with vlogs, fashion, lifestyle, fitness, all that good stuff. And I'm so happy that you guys are here. In today's video, I really just want to talk about Matthew 8. And as some of you may know or maybe experience, when you are going through your chapters in the Bible or books in the Bible and you're reading them, when you reread the chapters or books in the Bible, something new always stands out, at least for me. Like, I will never read a chapter and be like, oh, wow, everything is just making sense, right? Like, you constantly are going back to that chapter or whatever, and I feel like the Holy Spirit just, like, sparks something new in your mind, and that's exactly what happened to me when I was reading Matthew chapter 8. So if you guys want to open up your Bibles with me, I will be in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 to 27. Jesus calms the storm. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of a man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. Two things I want to know. Number one, the first thing that stuck out to me was God's response. His response was not, don't worry, stop, like, like, stop doubting my ability or, you know, don't worry, I've got this under control. It was, you have little faith, why are you so afraid? That phrase, why are you so afraid, sticks out to me so much because I feel as if it's like God saying, you're really worried about that. Like, you just experience all the things that I just did, the miracles that I perform, yet you're going to waver in disbelief that I wouldn't be able to get you through this storm. You're worried about that. Oh, there's so much power when he says, why are you so afraid? And maybe he's asking you that same question and you are going through something. You're going through a situation. You are going through what the disciples are going through, right? Maybe it's lasting for weeks, months, years, whatever. Maybe God is actually tapping on your shoulder and he's saying, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid that you lost your job? Why are you so afraid that your friendship is failing? Why are you so afraid about this financial difficulty? Maybe he's asking you just that question. Why are you so afraid? And I say this all the time in all my videos, but where you worry the most, you trust God the least. And so if you don't think that he can get you through this storm, then he won't get you through this storm. You need to have belief in his ability that he can. Side note from this first point, but Jesus was the one to lead them into the boat in the first place. The disciples followed. So Jesus didn't lead them into the boat not knowing what was going to happen, right? The reason why that happened was because Jesus, sorry, I get chills. Jesus is trying to refine the disciples' faith. Just because they chose to leave everything and follow Jesus does not mean that they had 10 out of 10 faith. Like, does not mean like, oh my goodness, Lord, you are my savior. I'm never going to worry. I'm never going to have doubts. I'm never going to, you know, encounter tribulations, trials, because you are the way, you are the right way, you are the answer. No, you guys, Jesus is always, dude, like this, oh, do you guys ever get the Holy Spirit chills? Holy, oh, holy moly. It's happening right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you guys know what I'm talking about and you have gotten the Holy Spirit chills, like please leave a comment down below because it is like, I don't know. You feel like this tingling sensation or whatever. Anyway, so what was I saying? 
The disciples needed to encounter that moment because Jesus is essentially saying, you need to trust me. Okay. You need to have faith in my abilities. Stop undermining my ability because when you undermine my ability, you are saying that I'm not capable to weather the storm that you are going through. And so I don't know if this is for you guys right now. Maybe there's someone on the other side of the screen. I'm literally speaking directly to you, but he wants us to trust that he is in control. He is so mighty and he's so holy. You guys like don't ever for a second. And it's going to happen. It happens to me all the time where it's like, I doubt some, some of his abilities. I doubt, you know, Lord, how am I going to get through this? Oh my gosh, I'm worried. My mind is, you know, just overwhelmed with this emotion. Okay. But when I'm overwhelmed with emotion, I take a step back and I pray. I give it up to the Lord because he is the one to do something with it. I cannot, I cannot based on my own abilities, my own understanding, just like it is in Proverbs three, verse five through six. I referenced this verse so much because it is so powerful. And if I could get that tattooed on the front of my forehead, I probably would. The second thing I want to talk about is it reminds me of the verse Jeremiah 33, where he says, call on to me and I will answer you. Friends, he is going to answer you. If you are not hearing his answer, if it is not apparent and it is not yet come, be patient, okay? Hold on to the truth. Hold on to what Jesus is doing because there's a reason why he's not answering immediately, okay? And if he is answering immediately and it's not the way that you wanted because he's protecting you for something better or he's trying to grow your faith in him, you need to be obedient. You need to walk with him. You need to trust that he is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, it is the Lord who created this earth, okay? So he is able to answer when called upon, but you need to call upon him. And just like the disciples did in that boat, they call on to him, right? Jesus responds, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? We can draw near to God and know that he hears our deepest cries. And maybe you're watching this right now and you're thinking, no, I'm a sinner. I'm really far gone. You know, I don't deserve Jesus. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve anything that he has to offer me. You guys, we don't. We don't deserve it. At the end of the day, we don't deserve it, okay? He was the one to die on the cross to bear all of our sins, okay? If you think you are so far gone, just let me remind you of the verse. It's not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. You have the ability to call onto the Father because he wants to answer you. You just need to do it. And if, like I said just a few minutes ago, and if you are calling on him and he's not answering, it is for a reason. Like everything in your life is for a reason. I think we just need to remind ourselves of that. I'm going to read a page out of Charles Stanley, How to Let God Solve All Your Problems, 12 Keys to Finding Clear Guidance in Life's Trials, because this book has actually transformed my life. If it is one thing that I want you guys to just take away from this video, it is obviously put your trust in God because he is the one to cast all away your doubts. He's the one to do immeasurably more, but also take time to really learn about God and take time to be reminded of his promises. And this book does such a good job of doing that. And I will leave it down. Um, I will leave it linked in the description box below. But I wanted to read this really quickly. In two chronicles, after a series of missteps, King Jehoshaphat found himself and the nation of Judah in a very difficult situation. In fact, the threat facing them was deadly, and for a time, it appeared Judah would be overthrown. The king had tried to mend fences with his neighboring enemies, something that he would have not done since this only led to more trouble. Instead of soothing enemy forces, the menacing armies devised a plan to march on Jerusalem and destroy it. When King Jehoshaphat received the word of impending danger, fear filled his heart. Just like the disciples, fear filled their hearts. However, instead of allowing fear to direct and rule his emotions, he did one thing he knew would bring hope to an otherwise deteriorating situation. He turned to the Lord in prayer. In other words, fear was not his final choice. It came as a quick response to his circumstances, but he did not cling to it. Instead, he responded in faith through prayer. When trouble strikes without warning, what is your first response? Oh, I got the chills again. Oh my gosh, I got the chills again. 
Most of us have had the same type of experience. Suddenly our lives take a dark and stormy turn. Our minds fill quickly with thoughts of panic, but God's spirit also rises up within us to remind us that he is in control of even the most chaotic situations. If you forget everything else, remember this. God is always in control. Nothing that comes your way catches him off guard. He is Lord over every detail of life and certainly over every storm, no matter how deep or dark it becomes. I don't know if this is like, this is not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe everything happens for a reason. I feel like the Holy Spirit made this possible. But in church today, that verse that I just read to you about, in other words, fear was not his final choice. It came as a quick response to his circumstances, but he did not cling to it. In church, we were talking about how Thomas, one of his disciples, was someone that doubted God a lot, doubted God's ability. Not that he couldn't perform miracles, but he was just someone that was kind of always like on edge. So in today's sermon, the one thing that was on the screen that really stuck out to me that literally just like connected exactly to this book was they named their doubt and brought it to God. Therefore, like they didn't cling on to their doubt. They didn't cling on to, to that emotion. They first brought it to the Lord. And I feel like that's what we need to do as believers. We need to bring our doubts. We need to bring our fears to the Lord because he is the one to do something with it. Like, so basically that's all I wanted to say was those two points. And then obviously some other stuff was number one, God is so mighty and powerful just with his response of why are you so afraid? Like, you really don't think that I can handle that? Basically is what he's saying, at least in my mind. That's how he's responding to his disciples. And the number two is when we call unto the Lord, just like it says in Jeremiah 33, that he will answer you. And so what we what do we need to do on our behalf? We need to pray to the Lord that he can. We need to pray to him. And if you're not getting your answer right then and there, you guys, I don't know about you, but it's because Jesus wants the best for us. And we wait in certain seasons because we want the best. And the one thing that's like sticking out to my mind is like sourdough. If you guys have ever made sourdough, it's a long process, right? But it's worth it because it's the best at the end. What, what the result is, is so good that if I didn't knead the dough for less than this amount of time, or if I didn't bake it in the oven for less, for less amount of time, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be the best result that I can make. And God essentially is telling us, if you want the best, if you want what he has for you, you need to be willing to wait. That comes with patience. So stop trying to rush. Stop trying to hurry and try to, oh, Lord's not, um, Lord's not responding on my behalf or, uh, you know, Jesus isn't doing anything. So I, I, sh I need to step in. I need to fix the problem. I need to do this. I need to fix the problem. So I'm going to do what I can. And you guys, we need to give Jesus the chance to move. I think sometimes we often as believers, like we try to just like hop in. I know for me, like I do, I'm like, oh boy, I just lost my job. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go find a new one. And it's like, instead of like praying to the Lord, like, Lord, what would you have me do? Lord, what is your will for my life, for my next move? We try to move so fast and we don't even give Jesus the chance to. So that is all done. Also, I, I didn't say that I lost my job. That was just like a reference of something that happened to me, obviously months ago, but um, yeah, I am so thankful that you guys stayed around for this video. I'm sorry it's a little bit longer than the than the other ones, but if there's something on your heart that you guys want me to cover or message me, you guys, my inbox is always open. I know on, on YouTube, there's not like an inbox section, but if you want to go to Alexis Lee Trevino, message me how I can pray for you. If there's something that you want me to cover, any certain scriptures, books, etc. If you have questions, like I will do my best to answer them. As always, I'm I am growing in my faith as all of you. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely day. And remember that God is with you. He's for you. He's your protector, okay? You need to call on to him because he will answer. He wants to generously answer you. He wants to generously, generous, he wants to generously, he wants to generously give discernment and wisdom, okay, to those who seek him. And so, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day.